Hey guys, this is the Longhorn Engineer. I had just finished wiring up the last of the displays. And they're all hooked up. So, flip on the switch. There we go. I fixed the issue with the glitches. So you can hit the flippers and they don't mess up the displays at all. Let's see. Oh, how I fixed it. See this uh, this tape. This is a aluminum tape, and so it creates a nice barrier from the uh, electromagnetic fields that the solenoids put uh, put out, and so it protects the, the signals. So you look back here. It's more tape, more tape on the back side. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. We have the input driver, which controls all the so all the inputs go into here. And then it outputs serially to the computer here. It's not wired up all the, all the way yet, but I should be able to get that done this coming up weekend. That's the solenoid driver. It's not even close to being done yet. But the board's done. Uh, there's the CPU, which is the propeller uh, by Parallax chip. So this wire has all the voltages that come in 12, 5, 3 and a half ground and then it distributes it how on the board. So displays get 12 volts, and then the 12 volts come into the display through these regulators, and so these regulators dictate how bright these two displays are. So one controls the big display, one controls the alphanumeric display, which is smaller and runs off lower voltages. That way you can tweak them and make sure that all the displays are the same brightness. Right now, it only counts up to 9,998, and yeah, um, hopefully when the input driver is done, I can have it starting to start scoring. So when you hit this bumper, it will add one to the number on the board. Uh, let's see, so the flippers are working. Let's see, in here, I added some pinball switches. They don't do anything yet, but this first one will be connected to the switch back here. That's on the propeller board, and I don't know if you can see it, but if you press this switch right here, it resets the computer. That way, if let's say the program crashes or something similar, hopefully it won't crash when it's all done, you can go in here and press this button and reset it instead of having to drag the pinball machine out and undo the back and press that little button. So you should just be able to push that little switch. Been uh, experimenting with ramp design. Let's see, where is that ball? Oh, in my pocket. Pinball. And so, this is just a piece of scrap metal I had, so I just bent it in the shape of a C channel, put some tape down for the on ramp, and basically this ramp will go up here, it will wrap around, drop it right here, and that way you can hit, hit, the, hit those drop targets over there. So, been experimenting how much angle you can put on it before uh, the ball can't go up it with how powerful these flippers are. And since this is a 50 volt system, um, it will basically go up about a ramp about that steep, which is way more enough than I need, I need it to be about there. So it'll go from two in, so it'll go from the play field to about two inches in height and about six inches, and that should be ideal and this is one's a little wider than I want it to be. It's this is about three inches wide. I'm gonna, the uh, final design will be two and a half inches wide, and then it'll go to a so it'll come around curve, and then go into a uh, inch and a quarter channel that will go all the way around and drop it there. Then I am thinking instead of normal ball locks, like the ball goes into a little hole and it gets locked in until you get them all locked and then they pop out, is on this channel have a little part that would 
go over and deflect the balls into a cage above the play field. And so when you get three balls in there, it undoes the lock down here, and all the balls drop onto the play field. Oh, this little guy is a spinner. Let's see if I can get it over here. And this is a spinner off uh, another old pinball machine. And I took the old plate off and I put this five and a half inch hard drive platter on it. And basically I'll be cutting a hole right here in the play field. This gets mounted underneath it and this will spin. Um, so what will happen is that the ball lock that comes up will drop it onto this platter that will be spinning and uh, hopefully fling the balls around maybe which way. So yeah. That'll be it guys.